Let's take a look at another piece of equipment that I you don't see very often, and I, I've never really seen it demonstrated on uh, YouTube either, so I thought it'd be interesting to be, well, at least what I hope to be the first review. Uh, I just got this not too long ago. In fact, it just came in the mail a few days ago. And this is a hurdy-gurdy key cutter. Um, comes in a very substantial case, hard plastic. I have it unlocked, but the locks on this are very substantial. It's never going to simply fall open on you. And when we open it up, everything has its own cutout inside of this foam-lined case. It's really well executed. Just, I think the case alone is worth a lot of money. And since we're talking about money, um, everybody wants to know what they cost, so let's be upfront about it. As I said, I just got this in the mail, and let's see, the, the Hurdy Gurdy itself, they're going to run you $365. I got this from Brocage, so $365. Uh, plus, I bought 50 blank keys. I'm going to cut a few of them here for you. So total, everything shipping handles right around $400 for, the, for everything you're going to see. So it's this kit plus 50 blank keys. Okay, we open it up. What do we find? Well, we find a complete set of instructions telling you how to operate it and how to do the calibration. And, of course, the warranty card. You find all of the tools necessary to do maintenance on it, to clean it, and to do the adjustments if, if you ever need to do them. It comes pre-calibrated, by the way. So you really don't have to do anything out of the box. You find the tool itself, which we're going to pull out and play with here in a few moments. We find a rubber plug, which is used to cushion the key head, and you're going to see why that's handy in a few moments when we cut a key. And then you see a really cool decoder, uh, probably one of the nicest ones I've ever come across. It looks like a piece of Lego, but I really like this. It, it functions very well, and again, I'll show, you, and I'll show it to you how it works and explain why. You do not get the ruler, that's why I just put that there so you guys can get an idea of the scale. Okay, so that's everything about it and everything about the contents. Let's talk about the tool itself very briefly before we start playing with it. The tool actually comes in two parts. Uh, I'm going to set this one down for just a moment. We have a solid block of well-machined aluminum. And then on the face of it, we have the calibration dial so that we know exactly what position we're cutting. And let me show you just how this would work. For example, we take the key and we would set it on here and it will only go on one way. And you'll notice the little indexing pin and it's lined up with seven. So at this point, when if we were to be cutting it, it would be cut at position number seven. If we're beginning to cut, we would simply pull it off, turn it to position number one, and start there. We would cut position one, take it off, move it to position two, etc. And very easy. It's, it's literally foolproof. It's not nearly as confusing as the HPC pocket cutter or some of the other Chinese copies of that cutter. There are some other advantages. And of course for 365 bucks there ought to be some more advantages. Uh, let's talk about what they might be. Okay, we have the cutter itself. Uh, very finely machined. I can't find anything. Very smooth. No burrs of any kind. Uh, the nice thing about this one, as opposed to some of the other Chinese copies, is that the cutter itself is replaceable. So when we wear this out, uh, we can simply pull this out. It's a standard cutter for, um, for milling machines. We pull it out, throw it away, put a new one in there, and you can see it's held in by an Allen screw. So the advantage of that, of course, is that with a replaceable tip, we can cut any number of cutters. It starts getting dull, we can throw it away. The other advantage is that we're not limited to just cutting brass keys, which tend to wear over time. We can actually cut steel keys because we know we can replace the cutter. We may only be able to cut 50 steel keys before we need a new cutter, but at least we can cut them and we don't have to throw the entire tool away. Okay, uh, this is the shaft that fits up inside of the block and you can see when we put it in there, the cutter extends through so it can actually grab a hold of the key and begin cutting it. Now how do we know how deep to cut? Well, we have a calibrated dial on this side. Uh, and easy to read. We, there's a little arrow here on the tip. We simply loosen the lockdown nut, here this red one, red thing here, and we turn it to whatever number we want, say four. We lock it down on four, we insert it uh, as hard, uh, far as we can, and then we begin turning this crank, or just turning it with the cutter like this. Now you might notice that the way that I'm putting pressure on this key is I'm putting my thumb in, these, in this machine notch on this side 
and my fingers in this side. So it makes it very easy to put pressure on the back of that key to put it flush with the face of this dial so that I can cut to the full depth. The difficulty of course is that it's a sharp edge and it cuts into the palm of your hand. Now we get to the importance of this small piece of rubber. It's literally a piece of hose that's been cut. We take the edge of the key, stick it inside of there, and now you see we have a cushioned uh, edge against the palm of my hand so that when you turn this dial and you put pressure that way to cut the key, it doesn't dig into the palm of your hand. It's a really cool, well-designed, well-thought-out, uh, I want to say toy, but uh, piece of equipment. Okay, so what do we cut? How, how do we know what to cut? Let's set this down for just a moment, and we're going to cut a key. But before we do that, let's figure out how we're going to uh, decide what to cut. Well, most of you have these tools, the South Ords, and the South Ord comes with the little uh, decoding tool, and you can see the numbers on here. All we need to do is pick a lock, and from my earlier videos, you guys know that I came across about 42 of these things with no keys. So I'm going to cut some keys today. That's where my 50 keys are going for these things. Well, I took my Southord tool, I picked it, and then once you pick it with this tool, you lock it down and then you can decode it. And you decode it using this tool and you simply start at position 1. Now, this is important. When you look at the face of the pick, or at the face of a key, for example, this one, the way you choose the order to cut is you look at the face and you go clockwise. So this is position 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. all the way around to 7. A lot of you are unsure about that. You might not know which side to count from, so I'm trying to save you about 10 bucks from ordering the wrong key. If you'll start clockwise and go 1, 2, 3, 4, this direction, then you'll get the coding down. So, we simply decode it and we go from position number 1 and we begin copying down the codes, writing them down, and I've done that. I've done that already for, for this key. Some of you don't have one of those South Ords, you have one of these. And again, from one, one of my earlier videos, it works exactly the same way. This is a Peterson Pro 1. You pick the, the tubular lock, and then at the end, everything is locked down. You use the Peterson, oops, the Peterson Pro 1 uh, tool to measure the depth of each of them and again go in the same direction clockwise all the way around and that'll give you the code. Yet a third way if you don't have any of these tools but you can buy uh, one of these or one similar to it you can take a key and this happens to be a, another key for a lock that I have and the reason I like this tool is that the key actually fits flush against it so it makes it very easy to find the right notch with very little room for error. You can see, I'm, uh, hopefully you can see, I'm trying to find the notch there and there we go. It matches up perfectly because the key is flush, there's no room for error and we simply read it directly and that would be a cut number four. So we would write that down. Okay, so let's get to it. As I said, I have decoded uh, this lock, so let, let's cut a key for it. Uh, I'm going to move this case because I, I don't want all the metal shavings falling into my brand new case. So, let me move this aside. We're going to keep the cutter. We're going to keep the lock. Alright. So the way that we begin, we simply take the key and we put it on position number one and we lock it in place. Push it all the way down and push it into the face of the calibrated dial with the palm of your hand. The first cut we want is a 4. So by pure luck I happen to have a 4 already. So I'll put this down here and try not to bump the camera too much. We simply turn it just a few times and it literally that's all it takes to get a 4 cut. Once we've, we're completely flush we pull the key off, retract the cutter and we move it to key position number 2. So that's what I'm doing, putting the notch on position 2 Again, pressing against the face with the palm of my hand, we want, uh, again, a four cut. So, and again, I didn't plan this, it just worked out that way. Okay, there's your four cut. Retract the cutter, move to position number three. And for three, we want a three cut. Now, all we need to do is loosen up the red uh, lock nut dial it down to position 3, we can align it with the top of the arrow here, tighten the lock nut down again, and then cut position, cut 
a three cut in position number three. And that's all it takes. Retract our cutter, move it to position number four. Position number four is a two cut. Locked it, lock it down, give it a couple of twirls, and we got a two cut. Position five is also a two cut. Okay, double check to make sure, still locked down. Give it a couple of twirls, and there's our two cut. Position number six. Again, I'm lining it up perfectly with position number six. Apply pressure. Position six is a four cut. Loosen it up. Dial up to four. I hope I'm keeping this in frame. Our lock nut again goes in place. Apply pressure and dial in a four cut. It's so easy you don't need to use this crank. You can just turn it with your fingers. It's just so easy to cut. And then the last one, position number seven, line it up with seven, flush with the face, apply pressure, and seven is a one cut. So we'll loosen this up, dial up a one, lock it down, and dial up a one. And a one is almost no cut whatsoever. Okay, at that point we have a key. If there's any burrs, and there aren't, you can see it does just a super job. I hope, I, I hope that's focusing. It does a really good job. No burrs, everything's nice and sharp. No rounded edges, nice and sharp edges on everything. And then let's just see if, our, if it was worth all the trouble. Put a key in and bam, it opens. Perfect, just perfect. Anyway, there you go. It, uh, every, everything from the design to the carrying case to the instructions are just top, top notch. I can't recommend this tool highly enough. I, I just absolutely love it. Uh, I'm going to be using it quite a bit today to chop out about 41 more of these keys for all of the other locks. So anyway, thank you very much for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.